Learn how to combine multiple strategies together like this and effectively allocate money between those strategies. And why intelligent investors allocate capital across multiple strategies to improve performance. Smart investors know that no single strategy prints money every day. The real edge comes from combining uncorrelated strategies and managing capital effectively between them. Top traders like Rob Carver run 80 to 100 strategy variations. Why? Because diversification within trading strategies reduces risk and creates more consistent returns. We'll cover five proven allocation methods, starting with the basics and moving to more sophisticated approaches. I'll also share the real challenges with each method and how to overcome them, because every approach has its limitations. By the end of this video, you'll have practical methods you can implement immediately to optimize how your capital flows between strategies. In my last video, I showed you how to build a short side mean reversion strategy. And there's a reason for that. To truly maximize returns, you need uncorrelated strategies. If they're too similar, combining them can actually hurt performance. If strategies have 10% correlation, then 1000 strategies behave like only 100 independent ones. In today's example, we're combining a short side mean reversion strategy with a long side mean reversion strategy and testing different ways to allocate capital between them. You can download both strategies using the links in the description. Every test includes trading costs, slippage, borrow fees, and realistic order execution rules like limit extra. So the results you see here reflect what's actually possible in real markets. We've also eliminated survivorship bias by using past and current trading symbols. First of all, let's combine two strategies together. There is a multiple ways to combine a strategies in real test, but today we show the method when we add mutable strategies together in a new file. Here is my short selling strategy, and I will copy this code into a new file. And here is my long mean reversion, and I copy this to the new created file also. Now I have to make sure my strategies does not using the same function names, because if they overwrite each other, then it causes an error. Now we have added two strategies together. Let's move on to the allocation. It's very important how we manage money between the strategies. Oh, and one thing I want to say before we start is that next examples, we focus only on the allocation methods that can be done. We don't focus on the performance results. First and the simplest way is using an equal weighting. Divide capital equally among strategies. Simply let's change the both strategy quantity 50 divided my positions. Because in this case we have a two strategies and we give 50% to one and 50% to other strategy. It works well if all strategies have similar risk reward profiles. Example. If you have four strategies and $100,000, each gets $25,000. It's simple and avoids overfitting, but ignores performance differences and market conditions. Second approach is volatility-based allocation. Short side strategies works better when the volatility is high. Let's use volatility index and let's allocate more money if VIX is high, for example above 20. An opposite for the long side mean reversion. This approach increases allocation when market volatility is low to capitalize on stability. It protects capital in uncertain markets. Next is trend-based. Let's use SPY trend filter. Let's allocate more money in short strategy if S&P is in the downtrend. And let's allocate more money in long side strategy if S&P is trending higher, closing above 200 day moving average. It's good because aligns with market conditions, prevents large drawdowns, but it can miss early recoveries and it's more laggy. Another approach is to use specific strategy results. Let's look at the strategy's sharp ratio. We'll allocate more capital to higher performing strategies. For example, if a strategy has a sharp ratio of 2.0 over the last 20 days, it gets more weight. If the strategy has a longer time frame, use a longer look back period for the sharp ratio. This is a great method because it focuses on the best strategies performing in the market. However, it can lead to overfitting during backtesting. You could also use a moving average. For instance, comparing the equity against its 20 day simple moving average. You can add moving averages to your equity chart here. Finally, we can combine all these allocation methods. Let's use the S&P 500 trend filter, volatility and strategy performance together. First, check if the S&P is above its 50 day moving average. If true, we assign full weight one, otherwise zero. 
Next, if the VIX is below 20, assign full weight 1. If it's higher, reduce the weight to 0.5. Then, if the equity is below its 20-day moving average, assign full weight 1. Otherwise, reduce the weight to 0.7. The final allocation is the average of these three factors, scaled to a percentage from 0 to 100. This method dynamically adjusts capital allocation based on trend strength, market volatility, and strategy performance. While it reduces reliance on any single method, it can be more complex to manage. Feel free to test these allocation methods yourself and let me know if you have any questions. I'm always here to help if you get stuck. If you prefer not to do the research, debugging and coding, we're here to assist you. We have many strategies, including the ones shown in this video, available for download, which can save you a lot of time.